Amen and amen. Let's go back to our text this morning. And then spake Jesus to the multitude and his disciples. And he said to the, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees, they sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they tell you to do, do it. But do not after their works. For they may preach one thing, but do another. For they may, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne. They lay them on men's shoulders but themselves will not move, not even one little finger. But all of their works they do because they want to be seen by men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garment. This morning for the next few minutes, I want to speak on the topic, am I religious or am I a Christian? Say it with me. Am I what? Or am I a Christian? I believe that all of us will agree there's nothing like the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please understand, the church might have issues and problems, but it is the gospel that makes us who we are and what we are. Come on, say amen. The, the, the gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. Paul said it is amazing because when Paul writes about the gospel, he says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for he declared... It's power. It's what? It has so much power that when one comes in contact with the gospel, you're never the same. A murderer comes a preacher and a prostitute becomes an evangelist and a drunkard comes sober and a liar start telling the truth and drug abusers start living a decent life. I believe I'm safe in saying all of us in this church this morning ought to praise God because of the gospel and what it has done for each one of us. The songwriter talks about the gospel. It says the gospel has power, wonder working power. Now, now stick with me, stick with me, because as powerful as the gospel is, there's a problem. You see, we have the gospel. Come on, say amen. That's what the church has. The church has the what? Now, with all the gospel, you would think, Christian friends, that people would be running to the church. Hey, amen. One would think that with an excellent message as ours that set men free, there would be more people in church than at a football game. But there lies the problem, because truth be told, somebody said, and you know, there are more people out there than in yeah, yeah. Somebody did a research and said that between eight to 10,000 churches close every year. My God, my God. It said that, 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 that between the year 2010 and 2012, that half of all churches in America, I'm not just talking about Adventist churches, I'm just talking about churches, over half of the churches baptized nobody in two years. Oh, y'all quiet now, y'all quiet, y'all quiet, y'all yeah, quiet. Let me say that again. Now, we have the gospel. Come on, say amen, huh? And the gospel, Paul says, is what? Power. It's what? So if the gospel is power, why aren't many people accepting the power? It is said, it is said that, 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 that 2.7 million people stop coming to church or going to church every year. What's, a, what's the problem? May I suggest to you, I think, I think, I think I've laid hand on the problem. If you would go with me one more time to, Rome, uh, to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. I think I got the answer to the problem this morning. Why isn't more people in church than, than, in, than, than, than out of the church? Why is it that a church can be open all year long and baptize nobody? Come on, say, ha, ha, ha. What, what, what's the problem? What's the problem? I think, I, I think I've identified the problem. Uh, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 14 through 20. Revelation chapter 14 verses, Revelation chapter 3 verses 14 through 20. If you're there, say amen. If you're there, say amen. 
What's the problem? What's the problem? Let, let, let me read it to you. And I say unto the angel of the church of Laodicea, write these things, saith they, amen, the faithful and the true witness that the beginning of creation. I know thy works, and thou art neither hot nor cold, and I would that thou would be hot or cold. So then, because thou art lukewarm, thou art what? Neither hot nor cold, I will do what? Spear you out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with good, and have need of nothing, and knoweth not that thou art wretched and miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that there may be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, that the, that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with the eye set that thou mayest see. Verse 19, for as many as I love, I do what? Rebuke and what? Be what? Be zealous and repent. But look at verse 20 because here's the, here's the problem. Here's the reason why there are more people at a football game than at a church. Why? Because I stand, behold, I stand at the door and what? And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and I will suck with him and he with me. You know the setting quite well. It is the church that exists just before the second coming of Jesus Christ. People see themselves as neither good nor bad. In other words, the church has a potential, but it is settling for C relationship. You see, in the eyes of God, the church is, the, is in bad shape. This church believed that because it has a beautiful building, because it has beautiful carpet, awesome praise team, an awesome choir, because they have a keyboard and a set of drums, they think they bad. They think they're hot. But the all-wise God state that they are wretched, miserable, blind, poor, and naked. But verse 20 zeroes in on the problem. Follow me, follow me, follow me now because John the Revelator identifies why there are more people in the, at the football game than at worship service. Why? I believe this is the reason why the church is in the condition it is in. Stick with me. The institution, the church, exists right unto the, to, 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 to Christ's second coming. So don't leave the church. But there's a problem. There's a problem. Verse 20 identifies the problem. Are you with me? Go, go back to verse 20. Go back to verse 20. He identifies the problem. Behold, I what? Come on now. Come on. Come on. I'm laying the foundation. Behold, I what? And I do what? And if any man hear my voice and open the what? I will do what? Do you see? Stop right there. Do you see that while, do you see that while we still believe in the church and its teaching and its practice, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's why more people are at the football game than at worship service. Why? Because Jesus is standing where? He's standing where? I want you to follow me now. I'm laying the foundation. I'm taking you someplace. Fasten your seatbelt. Jesus is where? And he's pleading to do what? He's knocking and he's telling the folks on the inside to do what? I, the church is God's storehouse on earth. Come on, come on, say amen. It is God's institution on church. It is Jesus who said, let them build me a what? Let them build me a what? That I might. Jesus said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. What? He says, no, I never designed for you to stay home and watch television. Come on, say amen, 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 amen. Okay, but pastor, I'm sick. Okay, you sick, I understand that. But, but, okay, pastor, pastor, it's the pandemic. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If you can go to Walmart with the pandemic. Come on, come on, say amen. You know, the pandemic just doesn't have the pandemic on the Sabbath. Oh, y'all quiet, y'all quiet now. The pandemic doesn't just exist on Sabbath and die at sunset. So you can go to the mall. Hello, 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 hello. So don't misunderstand me, Christian friends. I'm convinced and I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that the church 
It's God's head, headquarters on earth. I believe that. I believe that beyond the shadow of a doubt. But what's the problem then? The church with all of its power, what's the problem? Why is it that more folks, I'll say it again, why is it that more folks will go to a basketball game than come to church? John said it. John, John described it. And you and I have read this verse so many times, and yet we read it so fast that we miss what's going on. He says, behold, I stand where? He, stand, he said, I stand where? Here's the problem. Listen to me. Here's the problem. Jesus is at the church. He ain't in the church. Oh, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. <laughs> Jesus says, I'm standing what? And if any man hear my voice, do what? And, and I will what? That means that, listen, Jesus is at the church. He ain't in the church. And could that be a problem? Could that be a problem? Could Jesus be close to Gethsemane and not in Gethsemane? Here's the question we need to ask ourselves. Here's what I, do I just know about Jesus? Or is Jesus is on the inside? This brings us to our setting for the passage in which we will look at today. Jesus dealt with the problem, this experience, down to through our day. In the verse, back to Matthew, back, back to Matthew chapter 23, Jesus is speaking to a set of group of people called the Strives and the Pharisees. Now, what makes these groups so unique is that they are very religious people. They are very what? The strives, let me tell you about them. The strives were considered as the separated ones, the called out ones. It was the us versus them, the upholder of truth. They knew about the love of God. They just didn't have the love of God. Come on, say amen. They, they pride themselves of being so loyal and that God could count on them. While they saw others as hypocrites and they considered themselves faithful and true. They committed themselves to obeying the, the strides and the Pharisees. They were so holy that they dotted every I and they crossed every T. Somebody ought to say amen. And then there were the strides. That, I was just talking about the Pharisees, but the strides were, 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 were Jews who considered themselves PhD in the gospel. Come on, say amen. They considered, they considered themselves as rabbi. They knew the first five books of the Bible better than most of us know the back of our hands. And yet with all that teaching, you would think that when Jesus, the son of the living God, stepped on the scene, that they could recognize them. Because remember now, they were PhDs in the word. They were PhDs in the what? They studied about Jesus coming. They knew about Jesus coming. They knew that a Messiah one day would come to earth and would deliver his people. And yet, with all that knowledge, when the Messiah came, they missed him. So it takes me back to our question. Could it be that that's the problem in the church of the 21st century? Could it be that with all the knowledge we have, we've not learned to fall in love with Jesus Christ? Could it be that we are Pharisees and strives that we think we so holy that we always talking about them? And so this morning, I want you to stick with me because I want to remind you of the topic of the service today, of the sermon today. Am I religious or am I a Christian? What does that mean? What does that mean? To be religious, to be what? Means believing in religion. Deeply religious, intellectually, and morally. Being religious means that a person knows the Bible. They know what? They can quote the manual. They want the church, being religious means that they want the church to be pure and right. They'll argue you to death in a board meeting. Come on, say amen. 
Oh, they know how to point out this and that and have a Bible text to prove it. Come on, say amen. They are quick. They come to the church when you're so religious. You know the Bible so well that you come to church and you can tell a person how short they dress you. I can point out everybody's sins. But hold on. I'm going someplace. But to be a Christian, a Christian is a person professing and believing and living the teachings, the teachings of Jesus Christ. They're not just quoting the Bible text. They are walking and talking and acting the Bible text. Come on, say amen. A religious person not only teaches principles, but they are apply the principles in deed and action. A, a Christian, a Christian will read the Bible and say, okay, Lord, what would you have me to do? Come on, say amen. In other words, a Christian lives the qualities of Jesus. They show love and kindness and humility. And so we need to ask ourselves this, a question this morning. Am I religious? Or am I a Christian? Now, Jesus dealt with this thing in Matthew 23. Look at this awesome chapter. Let me refer to it again. Then Jesus spake to the multitude and to his disciples. And he said to the scribes and the Pharisees, he said, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. And all therefore whatsoever they bid you to observe, that observe and do. But do not after their works, for they may say one thing and do another. In the verse for our study today, Jesus is speaking to both the multitude and his disciples. He tells them, I want you to listen carefully now, I'm laying the foundation. He tells this religious group and these Christians that the strives and the Pharisees, the group we just talked about, the holier than thou group, those who point out everybody else's sin. He said, wait a minute now. They sit in Moses' seat. Now, what does that mean? Moses was a great teacher and interpreter of the God, God's law and God's word. So the men were spiritual leaders and teachers of their times, even though one could find many things wrong with them. Now, here's the application of the statement that Jesus is making. Whether I'm just religious or Christian, when, when anybody speaks the truth, concerning spiritual matters, then I am responsible for living up to truth. Uh-oh, y'all quiet now. Now, before the master starts showing them the difference between being religious and Christians, he wanted them to understand what is expected of all of us concerning truth, regardless of who's teaching it. Listen to the text. And all what all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe do what do it listen carefully Jesus condemned the false teachers but he never condemned the truth the truth and our duty the truth is our duty to obey without excuses even if a hypocrite is teaching it uh oh yeah let me say that again listen listen Jesus in the text admonished each one of us. Listen, I don't care if a hypocrite tell you the truth. Truth is truth. I don't care who's teaching it. We find that hard to deal with in our day and time. Because Jesus is teaching. We must learn to separate the office from the officer. I've got to learn to separate minister from the preacher. Come on, say Amen. I've got to learn to accept the, uh, separate the gospel from church members. Uh oh, y'all quiet now. Truth from the teacher. Truth is truth. Even if it comes from a donkey, a fish, or food. I had an uncle, I had an uncle who was an alcoholic. He lived in New York. Bless his soul. He's, 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 he's deceased now. My uncle would get stone drunk. But before he would get drunk, Lucas, he would always study the Bible. And when he got drunk, he was always quoting the Bible. Now, guess what? 
truth was truth even though he was drunk. Come on, say amen. You can say amen about my uncle because you got an uncle too. Come on, say amen. I don't know why you're looking at me like, oh, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was my uncle. He was a drunkard, but, but I'm in the midst of good company. Come on, say amen. Because all y'all got an uncle. And some of us was the uncle. Come on, let me leave that alone. Let me leave that alone. If I'm drunk and say that the Sabbath is the Sabbath, guess what? We need to stop judging the gospel by people. Come on, say amen. But Pastor Preston, you don't understand. Yes, I do. I understand that at the end of time, you can find all the faults you want to fault. You can find all the faults you want to with this church. At the end of time, nobody has an excuse not to live for Jesus. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. You can, you can come to church and you can find all the faults you want to. And if we are part of the church, you're going to find faults with us. Come on, say amen. Huh? Come on, say amen. Huh? I don't care who you are. Listen, people don't, listen, how do I say this kindly? People don't impress me on Sabbath because all of us know how to look holy on Sabbath. Come on, all of us know how. Happy Sabbath. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hey, everybody know the strip on Sabbath morning. But if you really want to know who I am, follow me home. If you really want to know who I am, come on, say amen. Be around me when the children are acting up. Come on, come on, say amen. Come on, come on. If you want to be, if you want to know whether I'm a Christian or not, don't ask me because I'm going to tell you I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. Come on, say amen. But if you really want to know whether I'm a Christian, that's my wife. Come on, come on, say amen. You got to work with me, pastor. Come on, say amen. Listen, if you want to know whether I'm a Christian, don't ask me. I'm going to tell you. Child born again. Come on, say amen. Sanctified. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, I am. I've been to the water and I've been baptized. But if you really want to know C.B. Preston, go ask Sister Preston. Oh, y'all quiet now. Y'all quiet now. Huh? Because the real us comes out at home. Come on, come on, say amen, huh? We say, we say happy Sabbath at home, but we say other words. I'm saying we say happy Sabbath at church, but we say other stuff at home. Come on, come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. But please be careful because what Jesus is teaching as I go into the study now, as I go into the study, be careful because Jesus says, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not going to let you off the hook that easy. I ain't going back to church because they're hypocrites. You're not here because of the people anyway. Hello, I'm here because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sabbath is Sabbath. I don't care if the church is full of hypocrites. The Sabbath was the Sabbath before they were born. Come on, say amen. And the Sabbath would be the Sabbath after they die. And when I see Jesus, I cannot use an excuse. Well, Lord Cheryl wasn't living right, and so I didn't live right. There's a parable. I'm not going to deal with There's a parable in, in Matthew chapter 22. In Matthew chapter 22, there's a, there's a feast that's going on, and, 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 and they have provided the garment for everybody to come to the feast. But there's this man, Matthew 22, there's this man who comes to the feast and he doesn't have the proper attire on. And he's kicked out. Here's what each one of you, if you don't remember nothing else in this sermon, here's what you've got to understand. Don't you let people run you to hell. Don't you get so caught up in people. 
and people who ain't living right. Come on, say amen, huh? And I ain't going back to church because they said something and they did something. Listen, here's what I want you to remember. God can save anybody. Come on, say amen, huh? Yes, he can. And if God can forgive me of my sins, he can forgive you of your sins. You're looking at one of the happiest men in church. Not because I'm the conference president. I'm just happy in church because I've learned something. I've learned a simple gospel. Listen, and I didn't even learn this at Oakwood. I just learned this in life. If God can put up with you, he can put up with me. Come on, say amen. But, but they ain't right. They, they, they said something about you, Pastor Preston. Don't worry about it. I said something about them too. We even. Come on, say amen. We just even. Huh? Pastor Preston, Deacon so-and-so is a hypocrite. I saw him. Yeah. Has the deacon done something wrong? Has he? Yeah. Yeah, yes, he has. But haven't you done something wrong too? Come on. Huh? 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 If I'm saved by grace, so can the deacon be saved by grace. Come on, say amen. Huh? So Jesus does not allow, let me get to my sermon because I'm going to let, let you go in 15 minutes. So, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. So Jesus doesn't allow us to make excuses for not living right. He says, the, the strives and the Pharisees, they sit in Moses' seat. Whatever they command you to do, do it. Just don't act like them. Come on, say amen. <laughs> and so now let's look at this difference between a religious person and a spiritual person. Now, time won't allow me to deal with all of the chapter. You read it when you go home. But let's go to work on a few verses. Let's go to work on verse, on, on verse 4 of Matthew 23. Stick with me. We're going to stay there for a few minutes. Matthew 23, verse 4. Matthew 23 and verse what? Okay, here's one, here, here's one way you can tell the difference between whether I'm, whole, I'm religious or whether I'm, I'm a Christian. All right. For they, he's talking about the scribes and the Pharisees. For they do what? Come on, help me out. Read it with power. For they were what? Lies. Heavy burdens and to be bore. And they lay them on. But they themselves. Here's one sign to know whether you're religious or whether you're a Christian. A religious person would make religion hard. It would make it a burden. Religious people will present Christ in such a strict and severe way that it weighs people down. It drains the energy out of one Christian walk. All the joy when you're just all religious, when you're just so religious, when you're walking around quoting Bible texts, you ain't smiling. Come on, say amen. All your joy is gone, huh? They lay all, they come to church, a religious person come to church just to lay something deep on you. They come to Sabbath school not to enjoy Sabbath school, but they studied the lesson, so they're looking for this one sentence to trap everybody. Come on, say amen. They spend all day long trying to figure out the 144,000. Come on, come on, say amen. Listen, a religious person studied the Bible to find out all the thou shall nots. When you join the church, what you should do. Listen, a religious person, uh, what they preach is that you ought to be ready. Now, it's, it's truth. You should be ready for the Sabbath an hour before sunset, and you ought to be on 10 plus 10. A religious person, a religious this person want to tell you everything you ought not eat. They want you to get baptized today and be a vegan tomorrow. Oh, y'all quiet now. <laughs> they love a religious person love to quote if you don't do X, Y, and Z you're going to hell. 
Their favorite quote is about how many people will be lost, not saved. They even say, wait a minute, I read someplace that whole conferences will be lost. Plus, a religious person will add on to God's word. They will add on their tradition. Their what? They, what do you mean, Pastor? What do you mean? Well, the way I was brought up. Oh, y'all quiet now. Y'all quiet now. A religious person was set in the church and they fuming because. Let me mess with somebody. Let me mess with them. Let me check. You mean y'all got artificial flowers? The way I was brought up. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Come on, come on, say amen. The way I was brought up is that if it's in God's church, it ought to be real. Now, 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 they ain't putting nothing in the offering plate, huh? Uh, do you get it? Do you get it? They ain't putting a dime in the offering plate, but they want real flowers. Come on, say amen. Huh? Huh? That's a religious person. A religious person very seldom smile. Uh-oh, come on, say amen. Come on, come on, say amen. So the Bible says, but they themselves, verse, the latter part of verse 4 of, of, of chapter 23, but they themselves will not move with one finger. Uh, they will not move with one of their fingers. Now here's the funny thing about a person who's super religious. They'll tell you how to live right. They won't help you to live right. Uh oh, come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. They'll tell you you ought to come to church. But they won't give you a ride to church. Oh, 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 come on, say amen. Come on, come on, say amen. They'll tell you how beautiful the church ought to be. But, brother, pastor, they won't put a dime in the church building program. But a Christian, but a what? A Christian will study the word and present it in a different light. Christians will teach and preach God's word with joy. Come on, say that. Let me refer to a text. John 16, 24. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy might be fulfilled. John 10, 10 says, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The word abundantly means plentiful and lavish. In other words, a Christian will teach the Sabbath just like a religious person, but with a whole different twist. A religious person will tell you that the Sabbath is the Sabbath, and you can't do this, and you can't do that. Come on, say amen. Huh? I can't watch TV, and I can't do this. And I, then I don't want to keep but a religion, but a Christian will say, hold on, they'll use the same text. God says, remember the Sabbath and do what? Why, why, why? Because God never intended you to work all week. Come on, say amen. God's trying to watch out for you. Come on, say amen. God says, I got your back. I never intended for you to work seven days a week. You die of a heart attack. Come on, say amen. So I've created the Sabbath for you. Come on, say amen. Remember the Sabbath. I've carved out some time for you so that you can rest a while. I like that. Come on, say that. I've carved out some time so you won't get a heart attack. I've carved out a time for you because when you at work, you so busy working, you ain't thinking about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You on that machine and you working and you passing out and you typing, you ain't thinking about me. So I've carved out some time. Because I want to spend some time with you. Come on, say amen. I miss you. I know you got to go to work because you got some bills. Come on, say amen. I don't want you to just pray seven days a week and don't go to work. Oh, y'all quiet, y'all quiet. Because uh, 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 oh, no, 
no, no, no. I'm a Christian seven days a week. No, live like a Christian. But God never expected us to be in church seven days a week. Please go to work. Oh, y'all quiet. Let me say it again. Please go to work. The church can't pay your mortgage all the time. So go to work. But God says, I love you so much. Huh? I miss you. I like being around you. So I created the Sabbath. Come on, say that. So you can chill out and think about me. Come on, say that. You can commune with me and I can commune with you. But shouldn't I do that all week long? You should, but you need some special time. I'm married and I'm married seven days a week. But there's sometimes I've got to put on the calendar, Sister Preston. I've got to put that on the calendar because if I don't, I'll be on the phone all the time. Come on, say amen. And so she says to me every now and then, I need some me time. The Sabbath is about that. Come on, say amen. It's not about what you shouldn't do and don't do this and don't do that. It's God saying, I need some So a Christian will bring the joy out of the text. Come on, say amen. The Christian will say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm not coming to church because I feel I'm going to hell if I don't. Say it again. I'm not coming to church because I feel like I'm going to hell if I don't. I'm coming to church because I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why do I need to be in the house of the Lord? Because Jesus says, my ways are in the sanctuary. Come on, say amen. I'm here at church because I believe that God talked to the preacher so the preacher can talk to me. I'm in church and burdens are lifted at Calvary. Somebody ought to say amen. The preacher tell me I've messed up all week. I don't want to go to church. I don't feel like going to church. I don't know why y'all saying happy Sabbath. I done messed up all week long. I'm just going to stay home because I ain't worthy of going to church. But then the Holy Ghost wakes me up on Sabbath morning. And say, hey, 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 you need to be in church. Huh? And so I, I drag myself at church. Then the preacher starts preaching. Then all of a sudden, he hits a text just for me. Hey, hey, I've messed up all week long. But God told the preacher to tell me, where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Then the preacher gets happy and says, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. And when sinners plunge beneath the flood they lose and Lucas I leave church happy come on say man I leave church believing I can be saved <laughs> a religious person will beat you down a Christian will lift you to Jesus Christ. Let me hurry, let me hurry. Here's the second one. What's the difference between a religious person and a Christian? Let's go to verse 5 through 7. Let's go to verse 5 through 7 of Matthew 23. And they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the, the, the borders of their garments. What, what are these phylacteries? These are little leather type containers which contain strictures attached to the garment. They, they took literally Deuteronomy 
6 verse 8. They took that verse literally. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be frontless between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. What was Jesus speaking about? He was reminding us that we are to think about his words all the time. Come on, say amen, wherever we go. But a religious person, it's just the opposite. They wear they they the scripture on, on their garments. In other words, they walk around making sure, a religious person, I want you to see how holy I am. Didn't I look holy walking in church this morning? Come on, come on. Huh? See, the religious people back in the Bible days, they just wore the Bible on their garments, you know. You know, they had it, you know. So when you walk into the church, people say, oh. But that's not what God is calling us. Come on, say amen. A religious person is deeply in love with position. Come on, come on, say amen. Honor and recognition. Look at verse 6, verse 6. And they love. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Verse 6 of Matthew 23. Come on, are you there? Hurry up now. I only have about five or eight more minutes. Are you there? <laughs> And they love, come on, help me out, help me out, read it with power. And they love the, at the feast, and the, stop right there. I'll say it again. When you religious, you love position. You love everybody to recognize you. They want to be on every committee in the church because, 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 because everybody else is wrong. Nobody can do it the way. Come on, come on. Home. Funny part about these people is, is that they, 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 they will come to church and sing and preach. But when they're not on the program, they ain't in church. The person who is religious, religion will, a, a person who is religious will lose his religion. Stop coming to church. Give up a position. Because they didn't call their names in church. Oh, you put Deacon Smith's name on the plaque. You didn't put my name on the plaque. Come on, come on, say amen. Pastor say, well, it's a human mistake. We just forgot. Uh-uh. I know y'all didn't like me in the first place. I'm going to join another church. Come on, come on, say amen. Verse 7, I'm, I'm, I'm speeding it up now. Verse 7, verse 7. They greet in the markets and be called of men. Rabbi. They love to be called by titles. Come on, say amen. They believe that their titles make them better than other people. No, you don't call me Calvin. You call me Elder. Man, you've been calling me Calvin all your life. Now, all of a sudden, I get a little title. And you disrespecting me because you didn't call me Elder. But wait a minute, wait a minute. But a Christian does, but, but a Christian, but a what? Help, help me out. But a what? does not work on outward appearance. He works on the heart. A Christian doesn't have to wear the title. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart so I won't sin against you. A Christian doesn't need a title and a position to work for Jesus. Whatsoever your hands find to do, do it. Do it. They're working for not the church members. They don't even need to wait to nominate in time. Oh, y'all quiet. Ah, not a Christian. A Christian realized that the Lord has been so good to me. Come on, come on. Huh? So you didn't make me head usher. So, so.
so? I'm just waiting on Sister Smith not to show up. And soon as she doesn't show up one Sabbath, we need somebody to be an usher. I don't need the nominating committee to work for Jesus. I, let me say it again. I do not need the nominating committee for me to work for Jesus. All I need to do is go to my prayer chamber, come on, say amen, and realize how good he's been for, to me. Somebody ought to say amen. How he picked me up and turned me around. I owe him everything. I'm like the Negro in the fear. I keep so busy working for my Jesus. Ain't got time to die. Religious folks, if you ain't putting them in the top seat, I ain't working. I ain't working. But a person in love with Jesus Christ, I don't have to wait for my wife's birthday to get her some flowers. Uh, hold on, hold on. If I'm only getting her something good on Valentine, birthday, and Christmas, I got a problem. Come on, say that. <laughs> If the only time I can work for Jesus is when y'all vote, y'all vote me to work for him? Are you crazy? Okay, 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 you said it. And I only work on the... Uh-uh. I don't need a title to go outside and pick up some paper. Come on, say amen. This is God's house. Come on, say amen. And I love the Lord, and he loves me, and I saw God's house dirty. Huh? 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 And I just figured when y'all wasn't looking, I just came to church and picked up the paper around. And y'all be trying to figure out who picked up the paper. I don't know. Why? Because my reward is not down here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can y'all give me five more minutes? Y'all don't pay me enough for what I do. Come on, say amen. Come on, come on, come on. Let me say it again. Y'all don't pay me enough for what I do. Hey, and I ain't working for y'all anyway. I'm working because he's been so good to me. Come on, say amen. Because he spared me. Come on, say amen. Because he fed me and he watched over me and he protected me. A religious person, a re third point, now I'm going to let you go. A religious person is not balanced. They're not balanced. Matthew 23, 23. Matt, let me, five more minutes. Matthew 23, 23. But he paid tithes of mint and amnesty in coming and have omitted the wager matters of the law. Judgment, mercy, and faith. These all ye to have done... And not to lead the, a religious person is a letter of the law kind of person. They so letter of the law that they return their tithe even on their garden. They watch the edges of the Sabbath. They read all the products on the labor. Verse 24 says, they strain at a net, but they'll swallow a camel. Which means they are strain their water so that they won't swallow a net, net because it's unclean. But they'll sit down and swallow a big camera, camel, and not have any problems. They omitted the wager matters of the law. Judgment and mercy and faith. What are you saying, Pastor? A religious person ain't kind. They're not even nice. They're so hard on everybody. Judgmental, come on, say amen. 
they will miss a whole sermon because they thought sister so-and-so dress wasn't long enough. Come on, say amen, huh? They tell you how to raise your children. Come on, say amen. They know when, they go, when you go home to eat with them on Sabbath, all they talk about is what's wrong with the church. When a person make a mistake, they ready to bring them before a board meeting because they want the church to be clean and pure and spotless. But they won't visit you when you sick. Come on, say amen. Won't even give you a slice of bread when you're hungry. But a Christian will hate sin, but love the sinner. Michael 6, 8. Thou hast shown the old man what is good and what the Lord requires of thee. Lord, what do you require of me? Show some mercy. Do justice and walk humbly with your God. Come on, say amen. A Christian will know you're wrong. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm closing now. A Christian will know you're wrong, but won't even tell everybody. Oh, 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 oh. They don't get in the Sabbath school class, and the Sabbath school lesson is about Psalms, but they heard you hit your wife, and they talking about hitting your wife. Where's that in the Sabbath school study? A Christian, a Christian, I'm closing now. A Christian would know I'm smoking. Come on, come on, come on, huh? God, God will fix that thing. He'll know I'm smoking. When I'm religious, you smoke and you ain't got no business being an officer at Gethsemane because God is looking for a pure church. A Christian? Hey, brother, be careful. We can smell the smoke when we come to church. Oh, don't stop coming to church now. Come on, say amen. amen. Don't stop coming to church. Don't, don't, please don't stop coming to church. Yes, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You gonna take me for the board? I ain't saying nothing. Come on, say amen. Come on. I ain't saying nothing. Okay, here's what I am gonna tell you. Go and sin no more. Come on, come on, say amen, huh? I ain't trying to put you up before nobody, and I ain't trying to tear you down for nobody. Come on, say amen. Huh? Do I believe the church ought to be pure? Yes. Do I believe the church ought to be just? Yes. But I'm so glad God ain't putting out the sinners in the church. Come on. Oh, did you get it? Sure, aren't you glad God doesn't come to church every Sabbath and put out all sinners? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, before you start talking about a clean church, I want a clean church. I believe the church ought to be clean. But before you start getting rid of everybody, you better be careful. You better be careful. Because the difference between God and us is I'll put out my enemies and, and protect my friends. But God is fair. And if God is going to clean up Gethsemane, he's going to get rid of all sinners. So you the last one leaving, put a for sale sign out there on the front. <laughs> because if God would clean up the church, all of us gone. Come on, say amen, huh? All of us are gone. So a Christian, come on, say amen, might know wrong, but he helps the person, not tear down the person. I'm closing. Back to Revelation chapter 20, verse 3. Though God is on the outside of the church, he does not leave the church. God does save sinners. Come on, say amen. 
We must understand that God is the master potter. And when you read Jeremiah 18, the, the vessel is broken in the hand of the potter. But he takes that vessel and he remakes that vessel. And it's new again. So we must understand that the church might be marred, but it can still be fixed. Come on, say amen. So the master stands at the door and he knocks and he say, let me in. I'm here to tell you the Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's nothing in this world that can keep us apart. What is your answer to him? Time after time, he's waited before. And now he's waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. If you take one step toward the Savior, my friend, you'll find his arms open wide. Receive him today, and all your darkness will end. Within your heart, he'll abide. Time after time. He's waited before. And now, he's waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door. Oh. Oh, my God. How he wants to come in. Lord, I don't want to be just religious. I want to be a Christian. I don't want to quote Bible text. I want to live Bible text. Come on, say amen. I don't want to know about Jesus. I want Jesus to be on the inside. If that's your prayer today, won't you stand with me as I talk to God? Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, here we are today. Did a little brief study on being religious and being a Christian. If any of us have fallen short, would you give us Holy Ghost powers to let you come in? You've been there knocking so many times. You've been trying to get to us so many times. And so many times we've been so busy pointing other folks' problems out and mistakes out and sins out. And, we're so busy being the elder until we're not even living the elder. But today, today, we heard the Holy Ghost speaking to us. Give us now Holy Ghost powers to let you come in. That we won't just talk to talk, but we'll walk to walk. Please help us. Now before I close the, the, the prayer this morning, Maybe somebody's here who's not a member of the church. Maybe you've been taking Bible studies, or maybe you want to take Bible studies, and you're here today. Pastor, he's been knocking. And, 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 and for some reason, I've had all kind of excuses not to let him in. But today, today, he sent you here just for me. Holy Ghost is talking to you right now. It's your time to make that decision for Jesus Christ. So if you're not a baptized member or you want to start taking Bible studies to eventually become one, if you're here today, would you raise your hand wherever you are? Would you just raise your hand? Pastor, you're watching with me. Would you raise your hand wherever you are? Not a baptized member. Want to become one. Want to start Bible studies. If you're here today, just raise your hand wherever you are. Father, Father, help us to be determined more now than ever before that we'll be a Christian, 
not from the outside inside, but from the inside outside is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let everyone together say,